Amanda, the Botanical Burnett, and welcome to my channel. So, I think it's time for an update. About four months ago, I did the last update on this plant, and I need to do another one. Also, don't mind the Christmas tree behind me. I know it's a little early to decorate. I'm not that person. I actually like to decorate my house after Thanksgiving, literally the day after, instead of going Black Friday shopping and spending money I don't have, I would decorate my entire house in like Christmas. It's decked out in Christmas. You might progressively see these videos getting more Christmassy. So I'm actually launching some Christmas ornaments in my Etsy shop. So I wanted to go out. I really just literally today ran out to Target and bought like a $10 Christmas tree so I could take pictures because I don't want to put up my big Christmas tree yet. It's a cute little ambience behind me, but I kind of wanted to point that out before you guys are like, why are you decorating for Christmas already? It's gonna be left up. I love, I honestly love like Christmas time. I love like the holidays. So yeah. Getting back to what this video is actually about. So I have two videos in a playlist on my channel that is basically the, like each update of the Philodendron Gloriosum. The first one is obviously me trying to save my philodendron gloriosum. Long story short with that video, I basically root rotted it and I needed to save it. The video that I did four months ago was a video of basically a four month propagation update and also a repot. So if you guys are interested in that, those will all be linked up here and also linked below so you guys can check that out. Also be in my playlist so you can you know, watch all three of these videos and see the progression of the Gloriosum. But today I'm going to be giving you guys a little bit of an update of the Gloriosum and basically where it is. I have to admit it is thriving. It is doing so well. So I wanted to give you guys an update on that and also some care tips that I've been doing here and there. So this will be a little bit of like a Philodendron Gloriosum care guide as well um i thought the philodendron gloriosum was a perfect plant to do like constant updates on just because it is one of my favorite plants it's one of my top wish list plants that i got last year it's just a plant that i have been loving ever since i got it and i was so bummed when i had to like chop it up it's definitely smaller than when i first got it but it's it's growing back really well so Let's get into it. Let's give you guys a full update and a little bit of a care video on my philodendron gloriosum. All right, guys, here she is. Look how beautiful. Guys, she's back. Look how big this, like, I can't even have this in the shot with me. It's so big. This leaf just unfurled. So I think it's the biggest leaf, but maybe it's pretty similar to this one. I think they're both kind of the same size. I'm gonna try to adjust this where I can talk and she's in the view. So a couple updates with this. Um, she is starting to tr or crawl across the soil. So you can see we also have two new buds I don't know what it is, but Philodendron Gloriosum grows really fast for me. Um, as you guys saw in my last video, it was like two leaves, three leaves maybe. And now we have so many leaves. It is ridiculous. But I just, I still catch myself staring at this plant. I love it so much. So the mistake that I made with this plant originally was that I didn't realize how I really didn't know how to care for a crawling plant. Now, I this is the first like crawling plant that I've ever had in my collection. So I really didn't know what to do. I basically let it crawl out. So the mistake that I made was I let it crawl out of the pot originally. It was in a round pot like it is in now. And I let it crawl out of the pot and it wound up not growing any roots 
on that big part of the stem. So when I put it in a trough planter, it didn't have any balance. And you know, long story short, it wound up root rotting. I tried to propagate it. And uh, here we are now <laughs> with this beauty. So I won't make that mistake again. Probably in the spring, I'm going to repot this into that trough planter again so it can crawl across. I've been really promoting it to crawl. So if you guys can kind of see, this one's actually a little bit better. Um, it's kind of heavy. So this one I'm trying to like let crawl. So this one's going to probably be the, the start of like it actually like crawling across the soil. I'm gonna try to like anchor it down. I think that's one of the things I'm gonna try to do is at least like anchor the plant down to where it can, you know, basically the roots will be in the soil or the nodes will be down into the soil. So it will be able to kind of root down there. It is a pretty easy plant. Um, that was really my only mistake. Uh, it's also in, you guys probably saw, if you did see my repot or at least my last video on this update, I basically repotted this in the chunkiest soil I've ever made. It's honestly mostly perlite and orchid bark. There's also a lot of uh, charcoal in there, but a little bit of potting soil as well, so it can still maintain that moisture. Um, I do find that I do need to water this plant probably a little more often than I used to, uh, but it's very fast draining, so I don't need to worry about, you know, it root rotting again, hopefully. I'm gonna back up so you guys can see this a little bit better. <laughs> Hopefully, I can kind of like place it up here on my leg. This is a struggle. <laughs> I didn't think this plant would be such a struggle. So what I've been doing care-wise for this plant is I have been, like I said, I it really is super fast draining. So I water it probably every, I would say like seven to ten days like now that we're in fall and we're getting into the non-growing season i'm starting to notice some of my plants slowing down with growth so i haven't actually needed to water that as much probably now like 10 to 12 days but still i'm still making sure that i check on it every week to just see and make sure that it's doing okay so and then it sits in my kind of away from my southeast window the main window in my plant room is the southeast window that i refer to all the time um it kind of sits like i would say three feet off of the window so it gets some really good bright morning and afternoon light but because again we're in like daylight savings time it is a little bit um it doesn't get as much light in the afternoon like right now it's one o'clock that i'm filming and i can already start to notice that it is getting a little bit darker so you know tis the season right the only issue that i've had with this gloriosum is that i actually got thrips on it i got thrips on one of these leaves you'll see the damage kind of bad um i think it was actually this leaf that's in the frame maybe where did it go where is the thrip damage oh so thrips actually wound up ravaging this plant and just making sure that there are none in there but you can see the damage here of the thrips luckily it didn't get the whole leaf but it did get the top that's basically an indication of thrips it will give you that like silvery weird kind of like almost like a variegation but it's not trust me always make sure you check your plants if you have that kind of sign on there because it could mean that you have an issue but honestly like i i keep this like kind of a like medium humidity for some reason my house gets more humid in the fall and winter than the spring and summer so i'm like kind of opposite of you guys i feel like i run my humidifiers in, more in the spring and summer than in the fall and winter my house actually maintains like 60 percent humidity in the fall and winter and then around like 40 to 50 in the spring and summer it makes no sense to me because florida is humid all the time it could be the fact that our air conditioning isn't running as much in the fall and winter and it winds up being more, a little bit more humid 
but I would suggest to keep this in at least 50 to 60% humidity just to be on the safe side. This plant does need a little bit of humidity. All my philodendrons need humidity. They're kind of annoying. Eventually you'll, you'll, you'll notice if you need to boost up the humidity or not because the leaves will start getting stuck and the um, leaves will actually not unfurl as quickly. But honestly, that's it. I mean, I, I am so in love with this plant. I'm so happy that I was able to kind of bring it back from death. Like I'm just, I, I can't wait to show you guys more updates on this plant and how big it's gotten. The leaves on this plant, again, aren't as big as they were when I first got it, but they're getting there. I do love the fact that I do have now two full plants. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and I also have, if you guys saw my pond video, I have two little cuttings that I saved a chunk from this when I wound up cutting it up and I put it in my propagation box and it wound up sprouting two little cuttings or two little nodes. Um, so those are actually in pond right now and they're rooting really well. So that's basically it. That's like kind of like a quick update, a little bit of like a quick care guide. Um, if you have any questions about the philodendron gloriosum or anything like that, drop a comment, let me know. I will be happy to give you guys as much information as I can. Um, I just, you know, like this plant has just been pretty easy. It's probably one of my easier rare plants in my collection. It's just been honestly really good. Um, and also a very easy philodendron because I've had, I have some really hard to care for philodendrons. I'm looking at you, philodendron brandy. <laughs> it's just, it's such an easy plant. It's such a pretty plant. I'm excited to repot this in the spring and see the roots that I have. That will be probably my next update. I'm trying to do like a few months in between. That way there's an actual like big update that I can give you. Although this month there is not. This is basically just like how it's doing update kind of thing. Cause the last time you guys saw this was me repotting it. So you guys have no idea how it's been. Um, but it has grown so much in those couple of months, guys. Like, ah, oh, I'm so happy. And hopefully the thrips don't come back. Um, basically what I did for that is I doused it in Captain Jack's um, and left it in my shower overnight. I always make sure when I treat my plants, I treat my plants at night um, and I just kind of let it dry. I let the Captain Jack dry on it. And so far I have not seen any more. Um, for some reason I get pests in the fall is really when I start to see like a ton of pests. I don't know why I don't get them in the spring and summer, but like fall is really where they all come out and they ravish my plants. I'm always going to have thrips. I'm kind of like at that point where like that is just kind of what's gonna happen like that's just like my destiny like i'm literally always going to have thrips it's just that's it and probably mealybugs i have mealybugs that are starting to get kind of bad in my collection too um and i did learn that male mealybugs actually do fly so just like thrips <laughs> they can fly from plant to plant, which is so wonderful. The only thing with thrips that is hard to get rid of is they actually implant eggs into the leaf. So unless you discard that leaf, you could have thrip eggs in that leaf. I could have thrip eggs in this leaf that's been behind me. Um, I could have thrip eggs in that leaf. I have no idea. And I probably should cut it off, but I'll just keep an eye on it and just make sure that, you know, they don't come back. Again, it's a really easy plant. It's a really fun plant. It grows really quickly and yeah. So hopefully again, in a few months, I'll be able to give you guys a bigger update and we'll also do a little bit of a repot. I'll probably do that in the spring and summer um, time, probably after the holidays, probably, you know, in a couple months. I try to like space this out. It looks like I have been facing this out every four months. So maybe in four months, I'll do a repot, but we'll see if it needs it and stuff like that. But 
that's it for today. Again, let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions for care or really what I've been doing if I didn't touch on something or if you have any problems with your Gloriosum or Philodendron, I'll be happy to help. So that's it for today. I hope you guys all have a great day and stay botanical.